goal scoring restrictions. When you guys are up 12 nothing, 21 nothing, Canada's U17s just beat uh, I think it was the Dominican Republic 21 and nothing. And so many people are like, "Oh, that's a sport, that's poor sportsmanship and all that." Is it though? Or are you trying to develop goal scorers that can score in many different ways and multiple goal scorers, hopefully on your team? Sub, get your starters off, put new players in. One of my assistants just had a great point saying that when you sub in a second line, you want them to attack and go forward and try things just as you did with the starters. If you sub your starters out and then you tell your backups not to score, you're gonna, you're gonna rob a player of the experience of scoring a goal. You're gonna tell a kid that's never scored a varsity goal, or in this case, a U17 national team player that no, you can't score. What are we doing? We need players that are, that are experienced goal scorers. Ask your team how many of them have actually scored a goal. When you are getting ready for penalties late in the season, Ask your team, how many of you have actually made a penalty before or taken a penalty before? You'll be shocked to see how few of your players have actually scored goals. Why are we telling kids not to score? The stupid, oh, you must get 10 passes before you can shoot or you can only score with your head. It's the most unrealistic thing and I think that's more disrespectful to the opponent than scoring goals. I think playing keep away is more disrespectful than scoring goals. The one that's the most disrespectful is when only one player is allowed to score. Get it to Rachel, get it to Rachel so she can score. Get it to Rachel, Rachel needs a goal. That is the most disrespectful one of all.